God bless you. We're grateful for you being able to join in on our Bible study on this beautiful, beautiful Tuesday night. And we pray that wherever you are, that you would give a listening ear to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the body of Christ today. Before we go to before the Lord uh, with the Word of God, I would love for First Lady uh, to come before the Lord in prayer at this time, please. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you today saying, Lord, we thank you we for thank who you, you are in yes. our lives. We look in unto the hills from whence cometh our help, yes, and our God. help cometh from you and you alone. Yes, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, God. God, we thank you for your peace. We thank you for your grace and your mercies. Yes, we God. thank you for hope, because there is hope in you. Yes, God. And God, we thank you for what you're doing, oh God, and what you're yet going to do in our lives yes, oh god yes, we thank you for the blood of jesus yes, god, being yes, applied god. to our lives yes, that we god. will live and grow thereby for us in you lord we move we we live we move and we have our being yes, oh god yes, you yes. are the lifter of our head tonight and god we thank you god even in the midst of a storm god you are a peace oh yes, god lord. help yes, us god. god that our our lives will be hidden in you, O oh God. Yes, and help us, God, that our the our lives will shine brighter than yes, the God. noonday sun. Yes. God, that we will share our lives, our testimony yes, with God. others that don't yes, even Lord. know you, that they will cry out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Yes, God, I pray for the apostle tonight, O oh God. Yes, God. I pray that the word will go into the homes, God. Yes that people that are not saved, God, that they will be saved, yes. set free, and delivered from yes, the hands yes. of the devil. Thank you, God, we thank you for your word, oh God. Yes. We thank you, God, for the spoken word that yes. lives in us tonight, yes, that Jesus. we can speak the Glory word into God. the atmosphere, hallelujah. oh God, and we can shout out unto you, hallelujah, Glory, Glory to God. To God. Mm -hmm. We thank yes. you, Lord, and we give yes. you praise, God. Mm -hmm. Help us, God, that we will not only be hearers tonight, yes, but we will be doers as yes, well. Yes, God, Lord. he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto yes, us God. tonight. Yes, and every praise is due unto you on yes, tonight. God. And God, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory yes, for us in yes, Jesus' God. name. Amen, and it is so. Amen, 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 amen. amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's prayer time uh, in America. It's prayer time all over the world and all around the things that are going on. If we, if you don't have never, if you have never seen a need to pray, you ought to see it now. There is, it is of necessity that men pray. Yes. Men, men should always pray and not faint. Uh, as we see uh, things that are happening, it behooves us to know that the coming of the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord is very, very, very near. Uh, the pre previous weeks we've been talking to you concerning praise. The first week we talked about God's instructions for praise. Our second week we talked about who should praise the Lord, when are we to praise the Lord, and where are we to praise the Lord. Third week we talked, or last week we talked about how praise brings God's blessings. Tonight, I want to talk about praise for deliverance. Praise for deliverance. And we're going to come out of the book of Psalms. We've been in Psalms 34 tonight. I want you to see uh, what the word of the Lord is saying. There is so much in this particular uh, written word of God, in this particular uh, division of Psalms. Psalms 34. First lady, will you start reading for me, please? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make boast her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me 
and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Amen, amen. We're grateful for uh, the reading thus far in the word of God. I will bless the Lord when the word of God tells us at all times, at all times. Uh, you see, this is a psalm, my brothers and sisters, that that David, uh, uh, you know, after he had pretended to be mad and all before Amalek, who drove him away before he departed. And so we'll see that uh, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Mm -hmm. And so we have to know for a surety that praise will bring deliverance. Mm -hmm. Praise will bring deliverance. Uh, and there's some things that we want to exegete and exegize in, in, in this particular uh, division of Psalms tonight. Uh, and I want, I want to start with how did David, uh, how he uh, begins his accordance with his familiar habit of praising God continually, Con continually. David wasn't a person that just, just praised God once in a while. He praised God continually. And he, uh, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. A lot of times we, we don't walk in deliverance because a lot of times we don't praise God while we ought to praise God or like we should praise him. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see that there's some commands here in, in this uh, particular division of Psalms in Psalms 34. The first command is found in verse three. The first command said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Mm -hmm. Magnify means to blow up, to make large, to make large. Make large the name of the Lord. Why are you making large the, the condition that you're facing? Why are you making large uh, uh, the, the, the situation you are in uh, uh, in this particular time or, or have been in and can't see your way out of it? Simply because you keep making it large, you're not magnifying the Lord. If you magnify the Lord, your problem will be much, much smaller. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt the name of the Lord together. This is one of the, one of the commands uh, uh, that, that, that we got to do. Magnify the Lord. Then too, we got to exalt his name together. Then in verse eight, we say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Camel soup penned this when they, when they said, uh, uh, um, it's mm, mm, good. But what people have to recognize long before there was a camel's, the Lord had, this was written in the word of God, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, once you taste and see that he is good, it's indescribably delicious. That's the way the word of God is. My brothers and sisters, there's not enough words or any word in particular that can really describe how good God really is. So we have to know how to praise God for deliverance. Uh, you praise him in the midst of the situation that you're in. You praise him, and he will bring you out of what you're in. Uh, oh, 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 we see one, magnify the Lord with me in verse 3. Let us exalt his name together in verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. In verse number 9, it, it tells us to fear the Lord. That have, a, have a reverence and a respect for God. There's not enough reverence and respect for God in conversations because people are not fearing God as they should. Uh, he, he, his name is blaspheme oftentimes, and the same ones that blaspheme make jokes of, uh, about him and all, and yet they, they have a, a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. So we see we got, we got, to, we got to fear the Lord, and in verse 11 it says, come and hearken unto me, uh, and, 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 and keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking God. If you want to walk in deliverance, keep your mouth shut sometime. 
Keep your mouth shut about people and what's going on and what you suspect of others. Keep your mouth shut. The Bible says testify what you know and have seen. And a lot of things that you know, you still ought to be quiet on. If you're not talking to God about somebody, you ought to leave them alone. Oh, God, this is good all by itself. Mm -hmm. But if we want to really walk in deliverance, we want to see the deliverance of God. My brothers and sisters, what we got to know how to give him praise in spite of, in the midst of, and regardless of. Now, we also got to depart from evil. You cannot walk in the deliverance of God, hanging around, being around that which is evil. You cannot hang around that which is evil. You cannot be around that which is evil and not separate yourself from it because it will attach itself. My brothers and sisters, what well, you got to depart from evil. Well, you got to do good, seek peace, and pursue peace. Follow peace with all men and holy new strife, which no man shall see the Lord. First lady, will you finish reading, please? The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. All right. Now I want we, we looked and we've seen some commands in 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 uh, Psalms 34, but let's look. Let's see some blessings that he has. In 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 verse four, it shows that God answers prayers and delivers us from all fears. It, he answers prayers. Read four for me again, please. I sought the Lord, and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Okay, it's one of the blessings of God. When you, when, you, when you seek God wholeheartedly, my brothers and sisters, he will answer your prayer and he will deliver you from all of your fears. In verse five, it tells us he enlightens his people. He enlightens the people of God. It says, they looked unto him and were, uh, and were enlightened and their faces were not ashamed. God will enlighten you when you, when you turn to him. You cannot walk in paths of darkness when you seek the face of God wholeheartedly. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he delivers us from evil, from evil. He doesn't, not, he doesn't lead you into these, these temptations and to these sins in which that you're falling in. Because whenever there is a sin, he always makes a way of escape. But you don't have to even enter into it, my brothers and sisters. So we need to know this for a fact. He enlightens his people. And he give, uh, God gives his people boldness. You are not to be a coward in the army of the Lord. You cannot be. He saved his people from their troubles in verses 6 and 7. We see uh, they looked unto him and were, uh, were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. 6 and 7 say, this poor man cried uh, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Not some things that he get delivered from. He got delivered from all his troubles. God is a present help right now from all troubles, all troubles. This is what the word of the Lord says, and I'm so grateful that the, that the Lord has letting us know that he delivers us from every situation that we face him. The angel of the Lord encamp about those that fear him and delivered him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is good all the time. And it doesn't, you don't have to look hard to see the goodness of the Lord. All you need to do is take a, take a breath. You can see that's the goodness of God. You, you can have eyesight. That's the goodness of God. Even if you didn't have uh, uh, physical eyesight, you ought to have spiritual eyesight. That's still the goodness of God. No matter what situation you're in, you ought to be able to see the goodness of God leading you out of what you're in to get you to where you need to be. Yes. So, so, so there is deliverance in, uh, in, in praise, but we got to praise him 
in spite of, in the midst of, and regardless of. Uh, the Bible tells us, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. The, the, the saints of God need to fear him, for there is no want to them that fear him. Oh, my God. There is no want to those that fear him. Psalms 23, what, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Uh, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Desire or want. Whatsoever things you want or you desire when you pray, you believe. And if you ask according to the will of God, according to the word of God, and in the way of God, you will receive what thus saith the Lord God. This this was even an Old Testament covenant. What the, uh, They shall not want any good thing. The young lions do lack and they utter uh, 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 and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord do not want any good thing. God always take care of his own. Yes. And you got to see it. And when you see it and you praise him for it, you can, you can walk in the power of it. Or what we need to do is praise him in advance. When you praise him in advance, uh, you will get what you're praising him for according to his will, according to his word, and according to the ways of God. My brothers and sisters, there's no reason for us to have want and lack in our lives when he has pr provided for us. Mm -hmm. uh, the only reason that there's want and lack is because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's the only reason. Now, the Bible tells us in 11, come ye children and hearken unto me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and, and love of many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. What are we seeking? Are you seeking the peace of God? Are you seeking uh, uh, things that are righteous? Or are you too busy being busybodies? Too busy being busybodies. And one of the things that's, that's prevalent now I see in a lot of people's lives is the spirit of fault finding. Fault finding. Finding faults in everybody else's life, but not seeing your own faults. Oh, you're not pursuing peace. You're not pursuing the things of God. You're always looking at somebody else's wrong, but you don't even see your own wrong. You're too busy looking at what somebody else is doing, but yet you can't see your own self-righteous wrong. Oh, it is a sad commentary, my brothers and sisters, What uh, that, that we, we, we just don't do what we ought to do. This is what people do when they walk in their own selfish ways rather than the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking God. As well as you say something bad or evil about something, say something good. Amen. Say something good and change things around. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord, they are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The, the Lord is looking at you. Somebody's watching you. Amen. Oh, peekaboo, God see you. Oh, yeah, the eyes of the Lord, they're everywhere. They're upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. But are you crying out to the Lord? Or are you complaining? Are you crying out to God for your deliverance like you need to be delivered? Or are you just complaining, uh, wanting somebody to have pity on you and not really even seeking the face of God? Oh, it's time, my brothers and sisters, for us to recognize that there, are, that, that there, there is a deliverance in praise if we just seek it now in order in order that, that, that the reason some people don't get a lot of things is because a lot of times they're, they're hindrances to your praise and i want to look at some of the hindrances to praise my brothers and sisters and and uh the very first hindrance we look at to to, to praise is sin mm -hmm. psalm 66 and 18 say if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear so isaiah 59 and 2 but your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden, hidden his face from you, so he will not hear. So you cannot be in a sinful lifestyle, practicing sin. Now, I'm not talking about a person just coming to the Lord, because that is a sin. As soon as you come to the Lord, my brother and sister, things change in your life. Things will change in your life. But you cannot be confessing Christ, practicing sin, and expect to get the answers from God that you want from him. Oh, no, 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 no. First John 1 and 9 say, uh, uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins. So uh, but 
But what happens, my, my, uh, we, we got to recognize that there's so much condemnation is put on people by, by Satan. Ex condemnation is never put on you by God. That's the enemy. He is always out to seek, to kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, you, and you have to understand that, that you can come out of the situation if you learn how to release things over into the hands of God. It, uh, Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So as long as you're walking according to the spirit of God, there's no reason for you to allow anybody to let you, to, uh, uh, to throw condemnation on you for you to feel bad about something in your past. You are dead to your past. Your old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So take thoughts of, uh, off yourself and put them on Jesus. Yes. That's what you need to do. The, all this stuff that, that, that people are saying that, that's not edifying and building you up, all these negative things, throw them on Jesus. Yes. You quit trying to care them for yourself. The more time we spend thinking about Jesus, the more uh, we will desire to praise him. The more time you spend thinking about him, the more you want to praise him. You get into his presence and you want to stay there in his presence. Nobody wants to be around uh, complaining and, 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 and gossip and, and bitter and backbiting and bickering. Nobody wants to be around that stuff all the time. Or none of the time should you want to be around that. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, yes. despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, so we have to know, my brothers and sisters, what that we got to throw things off on the Lord Jesus Christ, and we got to look unto him because he's the author yes. and the finisher of our faith. And another thing, another hindrance to praise is worldliness. Oh, worldliness is, is have my minds and our thoughts centered on the things of this world. Uh, design dignity, uh, you know, more than uh, ministry to God in worship. Oh, yeah, you see a lot of worldliness in the dance. In uh, Hello, you see a lot of worldliness in, in what they call praise a lot of times. Uh, and, but it's only a lot of times it's self-glory, not, not glory to God. You see, uh, but uh, the solution to this is First Peter 5 and 7. It tells us to cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Uh, uh, and then Philippians 4, 8, 9, say, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is virtue, think on these things. If there any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. These are the things that we're to meditate on and watch God move in your life. My brothers and sisters, God wants to do a quick work in your life. It doesn't take God long to do anything in your life. You know, what you're trying to work on for, you can work on in a million years and still can accomplish what God could do in a matter of seconds. You see, quicker than quick, God forgives and God heals, God delivers, God set free. God take you from bondage and, and he sets you into freedom quicker than quick, faster than you can think it. God's quick or ready to do it. Now, 1 John 2 and 15 said, do not love the world, nor the things of the world. In the world, for any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The church world need to quit being so worldly. It hinders our praise. There was a time when people would praise God and, and didn't care who looked at them. But nowadays, uh, you know, praise has become uh, uh, so to the point that uh, it becomes a show. A lot of times it's a fashion show. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got something new on. You want everybody to see it. So you, you, you strut in front of everybody with your uh, carnal dance. That's not where it's at. No, you got to praise God in the beauty of holiness. Romans 12 and 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Another thing that stops us uh, and hinders in praise is indifference. People need to be able to come together. My brothers and sisters, quit being lukewarm and indifferent toward the Lord and oftentimes toward people around you. 
you lukewarm and indifferent, you hinder the flow of the praise of God. Revelations 2 and 4 said, nevertheless, I have something against you, that you have left your first love. You know, we need to be on fire for the Lord. Go back and repent. Get your first love back. You know what it's like when you first got saved? You, everybody, you wanted to share with everybody about uh, the grace of God. You wanted to share with everybody what God had done in your life, how the Lord Jesus came into your life and saved you. You wanted to share with people mm -hmm. everywhere. Oh, it is about Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus. But my brothers and sisters, we, we got to know for, a, for a, 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 a fact that if you don't, Give God the praise as yes, you should. Yes, Lord. You will not get the victory that you need. Oh, then there is rebellion. Rebellion toward God. Rebellion toward parents or the authority that God has set in the church is a major hindrance to praise. People sit in church and they're rebellious. Uh, don't have a smile on their face. and Don't have joy in their heart. Uh, and they want you to know that they're going through what they're going through. My brothers and sisters, it behooves us that we need to quit being rebellious. Listen, in 1 Samuel 15, verses 22 and 23, then Samuel said, has the, the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice mm -hmm. and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the law, he also have rejected you from being king. So, so there's a solution to this. You know, and, and we have to know that rebellion and witchcraft, we have to know rebellion and witch uh, yes. and, 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 and stubbornness is just as the sin of witchcraft. You don't want a witchcraft in your life, you don't want to go to uh you're not going to the fortune teller, the palm reader, the root doctors. If you are, you need to be delivered from it. Amen. Uh, uh, and you know, if you and, and if you work in this stuff secretly, uh, God's going to expose Amen. you. But you got to submit to authority and, uh, and and repent of your rebellion. Hebrews thirteen and seven say, "Obey those that have the rule over you and be submissive, mm -hmm. for they watch for your souls as those who must give an account." Let them do so with joy yes. and not with grief, mm -hmm. for that would be unprofitable for you. I hear people, so many, talk against their leaders and their, uh, and their teachers, people in authority. And it's so wrong, my brothers and sisters, for you to think more highly of worldly things and worldly folk than you do that. Uh, the, those that God has placed in your life, something's wrong with that picture. Yes. Something's totally wrong with that picture. As leaders, leaders must give an account for the souls mm -hmm. of those that are under them. Now, if you're a leader and you're not giving an account for it, you're going to stand before just God. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, let me be the first to tell you, uh, I pray for members. I pray for my members. Mm -hmm. I pray for other people. I mm -hmm. pray for folk everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I am accountable to my members Amen. and they should be accountable also to doing what is right according to the word of God by leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have to recognize that when rebellion comes in, it is as the sin of witchcraft. That's, a, that's a tough statement, but it's a true statement. You're acting just like a witch or a warlock when you're acting in stubbornness and rebellion. Mm -hmm. Well, there are other things that we're going, going to continue on, on concerning hindrances to praise, but uh, our time is up for tonight. But we do want you to know that God wants you free from hindrances, praise, that you may praise God in the beauty of holiness, that you may recognize that when you praise him, deliverance comes. Mm -hmm. It comes in the midst of praise. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus for the saints that have been walking in rebellion. We pray for the, for the people of God that have been walking in stubbornness. And then we turn and we pray now, God, for those that are lost, 
that they'll come to know you in free pardoning of sin. We pray that they will accept you as Lord and Savior before it's everlasting too late. And God, help them to recognize today is the day of salvation. Then, oh God, I pray that they will say, Lord, come to my life and save me. Forgive me for all my sins. I want to live holy. I want to live right from now on. And then those of us that are born again, help us to recognize we've been bought with a price. So we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to the Lord. Help us to realize that we've been given the Holy Spirit as a pledge, as a guarantee for our inheritance. We're crucified with Christ. We're no longer our own. What is no longer I who live. It's no longer we who live, but Christ that liveth in us. Help us to recognize that we've been raised up and seated with Christ in heavenly places. Even though we're in the earth realm, we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Help us right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God, to know that we're to have the mind of Christ. And God, with the mind of Christ, we won't act like the world, do like the world, or be like the world. We are separate people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do what you see fit to do in our lives. We give you praise, all honor, and all glory in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. We pray now, amen, amen, and amen. And until next time, my brothers and sisters, you go with God and he will go with you.